Breathe. Come on, you've got this. You're running along the East Coast, about to set a new personal best. A few seconds later, your breathing gets real heavy. That's weird. You're a trained athlete. You stop to rest and notice a whole bunch of people crowding onto the beach. As you get closer, you start wondering if you're dreaming. Thousands of sea creatures are swimming ashore. Dolphins, sharks, whales, fish… You've never seen them so up close before. In the water, it's perfectly clear, completely transparent. Rescue boats with science equipment float on the water. Several cars arrive at the beach and a whole group of official-looking people get out. You ask one of them what's going on. They tell you the ocean suddenly run out of oxygen. It normally gets into the ocean one of two ways – when air brushes over the ocean surface and through photosynthesis. Grass, trees, plants – they all absorb carbon dioxide, that stuff we breathe out. They convert it into oxygen using the sun's energy – that's photosynthesis. The ocean gets its portion of oxygen from algae, microorganisms, and plankton floating in the upper layers of the water. They release a tremendous amount of oxygen back into the water, which helps keep all marine life going. No oxygen, no more algae. No algae, no more oxygen. It's a closed loop of disaster. That's why the water's so clear. Thousands of fish are swimming closer to land, trying to get the oxygen that's trapped on the surface. Beaches are closed. It's a madhouse. Even the monsters of the deep showed up. Huge squid, anglerfish, and humongous crabs. Thanks to the clear water, you can see it all. Millions of fish, squabbling, splashing around, creating real chaos. It's not just the fish that are in trouble. Since the ocean ran out of oxygen, it adapted. It started pulling more air from the land and taking its oxygen. That's why you suddenly couldn't breathe as deeply. You rush home, time to pack. You live in a city with very little vegetation and right by the beach. It's time to make the move away from the water. Maybe to a city that's closer to a forest or a jungle. That's where the oxygen is. While you're packing, you hear on TV that oxygen has disappeared from all the oceans and seas. Deserts are getting even more lifeless. The Namib Desert is on the coast of the Atlantic, which also touches the Sahara. These deserts get almost all their oxygen from ocean water, since there's almost no plants around. And when it's hot out, there's less oxygen in the air anyway. Triple problem. That's something you never thought you'd see on TV. Scientists with oxygen tanks walking through the desert. Well, I guess here's not so bad. As you head out for a short walk, you don't feel the lack of oxygen yet. But something's happening all over town. People are stressed out. A lot of people are packing up their cars and leaving. There's a huge traffic jam on the highway. You're not going to be able to leave the city anytime soon anyway. Night is coming. That's the time when plants and trees stop making oxygen. The air starts getting even heavier. The next morning, you manage to leave town. You drive through forests, fields, grass-covered mountains, and finally breathe deeply. People aren't just leaving coastal areas because they're less oxygen. The food supply is drying up. Fishing is basically over, which for some cities is a total disaster. Beach cities empty out, and the only way out is to drive. You can't get away by boat unless you have an oxygen tank on board. You're speeding away from the coast when you come to a small town. Traffic there is terrible, and you get stuck again. These towns just weren't designed for so many people. Traffic, stocking enough food, schools, jobs… It's going to take a while for these small towns to adapt. Land prices are going crazy. You can buy beachfront property for almost nothing. But farmland suddenly worth millions. People start investing like crazy in anything eco-friendly. Unemployment starts going through the roof. Luckily, you've got a bit saved up. But even here, miles from shore, you still feel a lack of oxygen. And carbon dioxide levels are going up. Uh-oh. Before all this, ocean plants and microbes processed CO2 and turned it into oxygen. Now it's accumulating in the atmosphere. People are getting more tired. They're feeling down, grumpy. But the plants all love the CO2. They grow bigger and generate more oxygen. But even with every plant working overtime, it's still not enough to bring balance back to the planet. Home plants start to get very expensive. 
People use them to make their homes easier to live in. It's great! The plants take the CO2 out of the air and fill their rooms with oxygen. For a while, it looks like humanity is going to be okay. Then, winter comes. The sun shines less and less. Plants don't get enough energy. House plants shrivel up and trees shed their leaves. One day, you're out on a walk and notice something strange in people's behavior. They move slowly. Some are just standing there, staring at nothing. You see a young girl standing at a bus stop, then she just walks away. Then she comes back and goes away again. She can't decide what to do. Wait, where were you going? You realize that you forgot why you left the house in the first place. Lack of oxygen can affect your brain. People's memory and attention span take a huge hit, and it becomes really hard to think clearly and make rational decisions. As soon as people understand what's happening, they get scared. When you get scared, you breathe harder. Now humans need even more oxygen. You're afraid to leave home. Looking out the window, you see a lot of people staring at the houses on your side of the street. Their brains gone all foggy. They can't remember which house is theirs. The next few weeks are rough. But then, a solution appears. To learn how to control their breathing, use less oxygen, and overcome anxiety and stress, people start to get serious about breathing techniques and meditation. Now, every day, you meditate for two hours, track your breathing, and become more aware of the present moment. Over time, it becomes a habit. Anxiety from lack of oxygen is gone. Now, you're just grateful for whatever oxygen is still here and that you're still breathing at all. Once enough people have adapted to this new reality, they start to ask themselves, why do we run away from our problems instead of solving them? And just like that, it begins. People return to the big empty cities. They break up paved roads and plant trees and bushes there instead. Everything becomes a garden. Roof gardens, vertical gardens, street gardens, open mall gardens. Everything gets a green makeover. Regular cars get switched out for electric ones. Most polluting factories get shut down. Carbon dioxide levels drop way down, but it's still not enough. Scientists even try pumping liquid oxygen into the ocean. Then they really hit the jackpot. They design and grow new types of photoplankton and seaweed that can pump nutrients back into the ocean and kickstart the photosynthesis cycle again. Fish get put into special artificial ponds to help them get used to having less oxygen around. Once they've adapted, they're put back into the ocean. People are rebuilding roads, but greener. Every city street has trees, patches of grass, hanging gardens, and plenty of shade. Plants are still growing fast since there's still so much CO2. But people don't try to control the growth of their plants so much anymore. Buildings get covered in vines. Flowers get bigger. Cities start to merge with their surroundings. Forests and jungles give cities tons of cool, fresh air. The planet is turning more and more green, and people start to change too. Running a bit late? Now you can leave your home through an upstairs window. Just climb down that handy tree branch. Some companies build whole offices on trees. City air is clean now and smells like thousands of flowers. The ocean's also taking on a new life. New, unknown creatures appear in the waters, creatures that no longer need oxygen.